All right, guys, we just made it here to Pieces of the Ocean in Staten Island, New York. We're here with Kenny. Kenny, what's up, buddy? Nice to meet you, Vector. Nice to have you. All right, I just walked into the shop. I'm pretty surprised. Beautiful corals. It's a lot to see. Let's get right to it. So let's just start with this. You give me a little tour of this tank. What size is this? 211 gallons. Oh, beautiful, man, beautiful. Who built the tank? Miracles in Canada. Uh -huh. And uh, so let me just start asking a couple questions. What are you using for substrate? This is, uh, this is actually... I don't know, not KFC, this other one. Uh, something eaten. But it's like a, it's like a thicker type of uh, Yeah, yeah, because I wanted a lot of flow okay. into tank. And is this tank attached to anything else, or this is the only tank? This is the only thing by itself, yeah. Okay, yeah. and how long has the system been running? Five years. Five years? Yeah. And how long you been in the store? Five years. Five years? Yeah. Are you open every day? Open, we used to open every day, but now we only open four days out a week, and then three days we do shipping. We do a lot of online. Piecesoftheocean.com. Oh, cool. You ship all over the country as well? Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. cool. Nice, nice. Now, you guys know, go check them out. He's got beautiful coral, guys. So, tell me a little bit about the fish. I see you got a blonde nasal there. You got a yellow chorus. Yeah, so I think the star of this tank is actually the male Danicanthus uh, swallowtail. He looks yeah. very happy. Look at his streamers. They're yeah. super, super long, guys. Yeah. And I see you got a copper brown butterfly, yellow tang. And then that's a Madagascar clownfish, a pair of a Madagascar. Uh, They're huge. Wide clownfish, yeah. He's huge. That's He's as big home. as a tank, guys. Yeah. And the angel fish, what kind is he? Uh, the angel is uh, the Genicanthus, um, so the M, I can't pronounce it. This one right here, the blue one? This one is a stark eye damsel. Uh, oh, stark eye damsel. Yeah, Almost yeah. looks like a freaking angel, like a little they angel. They do, it looks like that. I know which I one you're talking like, about. Yeah. I know which one you're talking about, yes. I mean, I wish it was a resplendent angel, but it's not. But I yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah. like pygmy, just very huge grown or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you got you got a few antias, you got a few rasses in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a couple chromises as well. Yep. Anything else I'm missing in there? There's some. Uh, there's a pistol shrimp with a goby in the back. That right. Potential light. Cool. Any other critters in there? For the most part, other than no. the regulars. Yeah. And the thing is, we, we used to have other showfish in there, but over time, customers come in, they like the fish, and, gotcha. and we hate to sell it, but we end up having to sell it. Yeah. And I see it stays. The glass is nice and clean. How often do you clean the glass? We clean it, try to clean it every, twice a week. Twice a week? Twice a week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And for flow, I see you got two MP40s on this end. Two MP40s. And then you got three dryer. Three, three dryer, and those are like. Yeah. Those okay. are pretty old. One of them is a 350, and the middle one is like a two, okay. yeah, 250. Yeah. All right. And uh, how often you do water changes on this tank? Every week. Every, every week? 20% every week. Okay. And what are you using? Instant Ocean. Instant Ocean? Yes, the purple okay. box. And uh, can I can you show me a little bit of your, your filtration a little bit? Yeah, yeah, come around back. Here. Okay. So it's pretty pretty basic. Okay. Skimmer. So huge Cal sump. Calcium reactor. Yeah, it's huge sump because okay. we got a tall stand. Okay, and who builds this calcium reactor? This is a uh, reef octopus. Reef octopus? Yeah. Okay. And I have one of my 1500 gallon gray calcium reactors. Reef octopus build a really good reliable. We actually run calcium reactor reactor. Uh, they their brand of calcium reactor throughout the store. Okay. So, and, and refugium. A refugium? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. Nothing and else. what kind of protein skimmer are you using? That's also a reef octopus. Okay. Yeah. Are you dosing any magnesium, any trace elements? So recently we started uh, adding cow glasser. Okay. Just because the, the colony started to grow out a little bit. And it was tough to keep up with the demand, right? Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, beautiful. And our yeah. lights, what kind of lights are these? So those are three ATI Stratton LEDs. Who makes them? ATI. ATI? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They made the, 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 the old school, uh, the T5 stricture. But the and how long have you been using them? This at least, probably three years now. Three okay. years now. Prior, before that, we were using Radions. That's the first time I've seen them. Yeah. We like the slim profile, pretty suitable for, for the store front. I love the color, it's amazing. It looks very, very nice, man. I love it. Thank you, Victor. Very nice. Yeah, how about food? What do you feed to the tank? LRS and Ross fruit, frozen. Okay. Yeah, and much. you feed a lot? Feed a lot. Yeah, feed a lot. Okay, can Seaweed I and, you know. Okay, and what do you try to keep your parameters at? Uh, so we only test two parameters, okay. alkalinity and phosphate. Okay. So alkalinity is usually around 7 to 7.5. Phosphate, as long as it's between 0.05 to 0.1, okay. we're good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And you mentioned to me earlier when I first walked into the store that you, you are checking water, testing water basically every day that you're here in the store? Yeah, we have a chart, you know, because every day is a historical issue. Like, I'm not always here. If something happened, a spiking, I look at the chart and I see, oh, there's a spike here, there's a dip here. I talk to the staff. Hey, what happened that day? Something happened cool. in the store. So we test every day, alkalinity every day. Phosphate, twice a week. Cool. Yeah. 
All right, so that covers this first tank. And not that I'm rushing it, guys, but he's got a lot of tanks here, and I want to cover them all. So let's go check this one out here. Talk to me about this one. So what this size is, a, is it? This is a 90 gallon, 93 gallon cube uh, marine land. Okay. Uh, we drilled a hole in the back to have overflow. Okay. Uh, we used it as a floating, floating skate on the on the tank. It Look. started out as a Ghani garden. Okay. And then kind of evolved into torch garden. Okay. Because uh, everyone kept wanting to buy the Ghani, so we run out of coral to fill it, so we put torches in here. So this is like, 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 how do you do that suspended aquascape? I, I know how it does, but I want people to hear this. Yeah, so basically you take a piece of acrylic, you bend it, you use a heat gun to bend it 90 degrees, right? That's the start. And then I use the silicone to attach it to the back. But the silicone has to be the plastic silicone, not just any silicone. And it's not, so in Home Depot, the silicone is usually in the paint section. The silicone that we use is by the window screen section. So that's the one thing you need to know. And that's pretty much it. So use the right silicone and then the plastic will adhere to the glass. Cool. And it's safe to say that this tank is 90% uh, LPS, couple yeah. softies and one SPS I see over there. Let's tell us an on the bottom. Yes. Post that's an is technically an LPS. Yeah, yeah. Depends so, who we're talking to. Yeah. I, I, what would you say it is? I would say it's SPS. Is it? There you go. Yeah, because it's small. <laughs> got you. Pilots are small. I got you. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys that get caught up into this debate. I just appreciate the beauty of the corals. Yeah, yeah. And but if you want to get technical, I made this distinction as I fast you. No. Yeah, yeah. That's when I fast you, it becomes LPS. So LPS? Yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I see you running a Gen 6. Is here on this thing? Gen 6, yes. Gen 6? Yes. And same thing, water changes 20%. Same All salt? the tanks, everything, they have a schedule. Uh, you know, on, on the day that falls on this tank, they will do a water change every week. So everyone's 20% once per week? Once per week, yes. Okay, and for flow, you got a small, what that's is a, that? That's a, that's a, a rope. Sea swirl. Sea swirl. Yes. I haven't seen one of those in a long time, man. It makes sense in this tank, yes. Yeah, it does. And yeah. is it working right now or no? Yeah, it's working, it's spinning. Yeah, what, it's just very, very slow. slow? Very slow, yeah, very slow. Cool, and that's the only flow that you deliver in there? Yeah, that's the only flow. And Aside from the return pump. And I, I see you're a big believer of refusion. You have refusion on all of your tanks? As, as much as we can, if the space allows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever see it that it's a little more difficult to maintain and clean based on that? Uh, not any more difficult than cleaning the, the fast band or things like okay. that. Yeah. In a tank like this, you don't have a calcium reactor, right? This one, actually, we used to. Okay. But now we're running two parts. Two parts? Yeah. And what do you use for two parts? Uh, that's the, uh, the ESV. ESV. ESV? Yes. Great product, by yeah. the way. ESV. It's, it's just, ESV is a company that's been around for a very long time. They're local to this area here in New York. Yes. And um, I recommend it to everyone. I think it's a great product, guys. Seriously. All right. And uh, next to this tank, what do we have here? This is a uh, Elos tank. Elos tank. Yeah. Okay. And what's the uh, size of it? Two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah. Is that again. custom Elos or is that one that it comes standard? It's a uh, standard. So okay. this one we scooped it up when uh, Aqua Studio, the Elos Aqua Studio in New Jersey closed down. They were liquidating some tanks. Okay. And we picked this one up from them. So I started one of our business, you scooped it from their beautiful reef tank. This is gorgeous, I like it a lot. So talk me into the course. I see you got a gigantic leather. Did you start it with a small frag with that? Um, no, we saw it was a little smaller than that. Uh, it grew up, but it was not that small when we first you know, acquired yeah. yeah. And um, this Ghani is actually came from uh, a local hobby is named Mike who moved to Florida. Oh and, yeah? Yeah, and then he, uh, this, this guy was in his tank for 20 years. 20 so this years. is half of it. He's not gonna like it when I tell him that I actually cut it in half. What happened was, during the 20 years time, a clownfish was sleeping in it. So the structure become, there's like a, like a crevice created by the clownfish that sleeps inside. That's crazy. So it gets, Nature becomes, is best. becomes like a heart shape. Gotcha. But, but because the, the flow and, the, and once it got to here, in order for it to breathe better, grow better, we cut it in half. Gotcha. Otherwise the center start to die, so we don't want it to die. So we cut it in half and this is one half of it. Yeah. Wow, incredible. Yeah, it's a mixed reef. Yeah, the Holy Grail tours, the pectinia back there is fantastic. Story. Chalice, the red goni right here, the little garden that you got here with the hammer corals. Gorgeous, man. Thank you. Spice and better pectinia, that thing is dangerous, man. I'm sure you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's why they're all up there by themselves. Yeah, I'm growing a lot of those. This one too, they grow like weeds nonstop. Hammers, yeah. yeah it's amazing how the hobby progressed, right? It used to be, you know, hard to keep, but everything else now is like ghanis. Uh -huh. I still think I still think it's, it's depending on where they come from and yeah. and the process from collecting to getting to us yeah. it's getting better and better I think. Yeah. 
yeah, the process under a lot more scrutiny, so everyone handles it a lot better. And better technology, and I yeah. think the hobby we've been spreading the, the war around through trade shows yeah. and more stores opening up and the internet available right now. Right. So YouTube. I think the information is traveling faster. Example right now, uh, I mean, some people, they think it's a secret. This hobby, personally, I, I tell people what I do because I invite people. I know that it takes it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of sweat to get it done. Yes. You can tell someone how to do something, doesn't mean they're going to do it. Yes. So I don't think there's main secrets. Everyone is using the same calcium reactors, the same power heads, the same lights. We're all doing water changes. There's smaller changes, but it's no different than cooking. And at the end, the person's got a lot of passion and dedication. So is one thing, one th funny you mentioned that. The, like the staff here, everyone brings different things to the table. So I actually let them take care of the tank themselves. Yeah. Even name the tank after the, the, the person take care of it. Yeah. Because there's no one pathway to success, right? Like you no, said, there's you know, not. You can use the same equipment. You can fail. One person can fail. The other can succeed. But if, for example, the tank behind me is used different methods, but the result is the same. Yeah. You know. So I let let the staff actually take ownership of taking care of the tank, and they bring a lot to the table. They have their own methodology. As long as the corals grow well, color well, yeah. that's all that matters. You know? yeah. yeah. And it's funny you say that because a lot of times to me. People tell me, oh, my parameters are better. I go, what are your corals telling you? There's nothing wrong. Then let's not make rational, like yeah, uh, yeah, just fast true. decisions here, change things too fast for no apparent reason. Look at the corals, not the numbers, yes. Uh, that's why I say people, to be successful, you, you find somebody that you respect in the hobby, and then you try to copy the method. And through the experience, the, the journey, you actually develop your own method of success. Gotcha. And then you find your own identity in your, in your tank. Yeah. yeah. So a couple more questions on this tank. Uh, you dose in A and B as well? Yes. Okay, um, and then lights, same, I want to assume the Radiant 6, 5 or 6? I think these are 5. 5, yeah, okay, and five, yeah. how about flow, just one, is that a Javao powerhead? That's a Javao powerhead, yes. Just one and that's one it? Flow, yeah, it's all LPS. Just but, real simple. Yeah, I mean, this tank used to be an acro tank, but we had a lot okay. of challenge providing flow in a long tank like this. And with that drain? With that drain, yes. So we yeah. kind of like switch it over to running LPS. Not cool. Looks yeah. beautiful, man. And for fish, I see yellow tanks, a bunch of tanks. Yep. I They're see you got um, yeah. uh, the Sermini, is that what that is? No, I'm sorry. Um, Freckle face, right? That's the Maculiceps. Uh, Maculiceps. Yep. That's Maculiceps. what I was looking for. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I see the blonde name. So what kind of chromis is that one? The little little small damsel? Springery. Spring Springery. Right? Yeah, Springery. You see uh, Mr. Raz back there? Flame you got a flame angel. So here you got a little little SPS display tank. This is one system. This, this is one no system. Originally, this was supposed to be a frag tank to take in the frags that we made from the main display, but okay. they started to grow in its own, become its own display tank. You know. Okay. Yeah. Looks beautiful too. Yeah. It's like a over, like a spill, spillover of a coral from. And these are more backup of the same aquaporos in case something were to happen. Yeah. Which things can happen, you know that. We have a lot of backups, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Looks and, great. And then the top, it used to be, um, it's, it's going through a transition phase right now. And it's got a Kessel light I see on top of yeah. that one. Yeah. Just a little mix, bunch of SPS down here. And then there's a fuse, the light is off right now. Okay. Yeah, but it's also running fuse, but no skimmer though. On this no system. skimmer, okay, high nutrients. Yeah. Okay, and all of them you aim to keep the phosphate low and try to keep your alkalinity about eight and a half or so? Uh, the phosphate, I wouldn't say low, uh, 0.05 to 0.1, that's what we're trying. Towards mm -hmm. 0.09, I think the sweet spot is 0 0.08, 0 0.09 cool. for us, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that you always need a little bit of reading. When you go too depleted, the corals actually retract and they don't like it. Yes, yes. All right, and here's just corals that you sell for sale, basically? Yeah, this is in the store. People come in, they can buy frags. Okay. That's in store. Okay. Yeah. Everything looks so healthy, man. It shows that you have passion for what you do. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, so what do you have here? So these two are SPS grow out systems. A lot of the SPS frag come out of here. Super, super healthy. So this, this one's taken, by, uh, taken care of by William. This one's taken care of by me. And okay. we employ a different approach. One, this one's very clean. This one has a two inch thick detritus bed in the sump that I never disturbed. Okay. But this one, he cannot stand any detritus, so he always siphons them out. Okay. But you can what see- What are you noticing? The growth rate is it's about the same. The what? I, the I do see his size grow slightly faster. The cleaner side? Yeah. And then the, he does tenuous really well in this tank. Okay. Um, and some coral he doesn't do so well here. I do better here, such as um, millies. I do a little better here than here. So um, the millies. But overall, it's very, it's hard, it's very small differences. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Or very small differences. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and this is 100% uh, Agroporous, both systems. 100% Agro. Yeah. Looks beautiful. And how do you keep parasites out? We have a receiving tank in the back. Let it macrame there for a while. We sit on, yeah, every new, everything gets, uh, gets dipped and sit there for a long time. And if they, on the they size. become into anything, then they make it into oh, a yeah. frag over, a big frag over yeah. or something. It looks beautiful, man. You're doing a phenomenal job, especially with this SPS, man. Thank you. Really, really. more really space. Good. Need more space, huh? <laughs> That's what we all say, more space, more, more space. space. So a bunch of zoanthids here, I see. Yep, the zoas. Okay. And here, what do we have? Uh, this so is this is like LPS. Uh, LPS grow almost a lot of torches. Is this the rest of the goni, the pieces that you cut? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Those mushrooms grow like weeds too, man. Don't you hate the fact they're growing into the, into the plastic it's, and you uh, gotta cut the plastic? I know, I know. And it's hard to cut the plastic with the band, so you know. Just... Sometimes you just end up selling the whole rack. Yeah. <laughs> I see this goni here. Have you ever noticed how aggressive this goni is? They are. They are. They can be. Yeah. Did you know that I read somewhere they, the goni actually give off toxin? through the water column, so you don't have to touch. If they decide to... Burn a coral next to them, they, they can. can just release toxin. I didn't know that, but yeah. that specific one is very aggressive. And do you try to keep different parameters on the soft in LPS tank versus the SPS? The nitrous, for instance, do you try to keep them any so, higher? So LPS is a little bit more forgiving, and, and we, we do tend to let the parameters kind of drift, whereas the SPS system, we kind of have a more of a tighter control. So you don't test this one as much? Not as much, we still test. Compared yeah. to the other one, gotcha. Right. Yeah, yeah. The other one is almost alkalinity every day, basically. Every day, yeah. Gotcha, I understand. And you got two more systems over there? Yeah. So this is another LPS system. And then we're trying to do some Ghanis over there right now. You guys use the same race, use the same fiberglass tank? Uh, this is specific one, I got about maybe 12 of them. Um, do you notice that they, they bow? Yeah, both? they do. So what you do is you put a, yeah, just yeah. like you did. Yeah, yeah. You put something under it. Looks beautiful here too, man. I'm yeah, gonna okay. leave with a few frags out of here, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is the, we call it the receiving R, R tank. So a lot of the new stuff that come in, we just let it sit here and dip and do a lot of dipping. Cool. And last should be this display tank back here. Yep. All right, so what do we have here? So this is a 300 gallon. SPS dominated. And who built this tank? This tank was built by um, Wisabi. Wisabi? Yeah. Looks beautiful, everything, man. It's a newer tank, I see, right? It's a newer tank. It's about less than six months. About yeah. six months. Yeah. And you did it because you feel like you're continuing running out of room. Running out of room, yeah. Running out of room, running out of room. No one, I understand your pain, man. It's like, because you want to collect more and more, and then there's no room. When they over look first you want them to grow and grow and then they become a problem because they're growing too fast yeah and then you got too much of something that you don't need and you want to have more variety right. yeah. so and then yeah, it's a good and then your customer they always want the freshest and the yeah latest you know exactly they want something different all the time and i'm not going to ask you details about this tank but i see you running a really big sump it's a really nice sump uh reef octopus protein skimmer again is that what right this is the vertex vertex bubble king vertex bubble king yes okay great protein skimmer as well Fantastic this tank company. actually running on Kalkwasser alone. Kalkwasser yeah, alone. Yeah. Chris, okay. Chris takes care of this tank. Okay. Yeah. And for light, I see you're doing a little hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. I see you're doing six uh, LEDs. Six LEDs and, and, and two T5s. Uh, the Bright um, uh, Retro. Yeah. What about the sunburst retro. moving on you? Uh, the sunburst? Yeah. Yeah, originally we had an island, but somehow jumped over. So right now we just. Do you worry about it? No, not really. So far, it doesn't move that much. But once they find, but honestly though, if we see that it starts to walk too much, or you know, we'll do something about it. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, and the last one back here is two tanks. Yeah, this is a lagoon. This is uh, Innovative Marine. Okay. And this is kind of our NEMS and uh, Scully's tank and Brown's Mushroom. A little bit of a uh, higher end stuff that sits in here right now. Okay. And this one has a long history. This is the first space I ever had. In my, I moved from apartment to a basement to here, so I repurposed it, and I'm just growing more uh, hard to find acros. Well, I can say that about 75% of this story is SPS. It shows your love for acroporas. Yes. How long you been in the hobby? 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, about 15 years. Yeah. 15 years. You're doing a phenomenal job, man. Keep up the work, the Thanks, good man. work, man. Seriously. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Hey, Let us come over. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. If you guys have any Staten Island area, don't forget to stop by, pay him a visit. 
give him a call, check out his Instagram. On the meantime, please subscribe to our channel, post some comments below, give us a like. We'll see you guys soon.